Himalaya for countless generations has cast a magical spell on the minds of people. They have come up from the plains, some on a pilgrimage, others in quest of adventure. Still more have come in pursuit of pleasure or profit. Himalaya, the landscape is fascinating, but landscape is not all. Himalaya traditionally invites an individual to take a journey inwards, contemplate, find out one's inner self. It is not only spiritualism, one can also find out how much the human body and soul can endure. And people have lived nestling in the laps of these peaks for generations, eking out an existence in a harsh environment. There is concern today about a fragile ecosystem which Himalaya represents. This journey which we are contemplating over the roof of the world would allow us to share the lives of the local people, also step off the beaten track, transport ourselves back into a period of time, encounter cultures, subcultures, a wonderful variety. We hope to share with you through this journey our joys, our exertions of travelling through Himalaya. Here we are all set to go. I hope everybody is here. Nobody wants to miss out on this exciting journey we are going to embark on. This is the drive right on roof of the world. Many people have travelled in Himalayas, but I think our experience is going to be quite unique. We are going to drive through from Dharchula, through Kumau and Garhwal, then through Himachal and all the way across the Himalayas to Ladakh. And this drive, don't let the name mislead you, is not going to be an ordinary motor ride. We are going to move off the beaten track at times, leave the cars on the road and walk down to the villages, witness the lifestyles of the people, their everyday experiences, share their festivities, share their sorrows and joys and become witness to a very priceless inheritance which Himalayas have to offer. हिमालय जो है विशेष है और अबब दुनिया के जो अफेयर्स है उससे भी अबब है ना वहाँ अबब लोग रहते हैं ये ये साधारण आदमी से विशेष आदमी रहते हैं विशेष किन्नर की बातें भी कभी होती थी किन्नर लोग वहाँ रहते हैं कभी कभी लोगों के बीच में आते हैं फिर चले जाते हैं हिमालय में नंदा देवी नंदा कोट की श्रृंखाव में वहाँ रहते हैं कभी कभी कोई लोग उनको देखते भी हैं तो हिमालय हिमालय के पशु पक्षियों को भी हम विशेष नज़र से देखते थे कि ये तो गौड़ के हैं जीव जंतु दुनिया में सबसे सुंदर वस्तु है तो हिमालय है न कीड़ी है न गंदगी है कुछ नहीं है ना वो साफ है धवल है तो विशेष आनंद आता है चलने में इसीलिए आप देखते हैं कि हर साल कितने कैजुल लोग जाते कैजुलटी होते फिर भी जा ही रहे हैं एक आकर्षण है हिमालय का आकर्षण है उसी से तो जाते उसी से जाते हैं बढ़ते हैं अधिक से अधिक ऊंचाई में चढ़ने की कोशिश करते हैं द रिवर काली हियर एट धारचूला मार्क्स एन इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर बिटवीन इंडिया एंड नेपाल बट द रिवर हार्डली डिवाइड्स द पीपल इट एक्चुअली इज अ कॉन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ सॉर्ट्स ऑफ कल्चर्स ट्रेडिशनली धारचूला हैज प्लेड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन हिस्ट्री It has been a strategic outpost, a great trading center, and also a cultural site which people have revered. This role continues. Dharchula was a very fascinating place 50 years ago, even when it was a small village. Today there is a flourishing township. Trends are changing. 
but Dharchula remains a very significant and a fascinating place. Part of the mystique of Dharchula, the frontier outpost, is its inaccessibility. All visitors to the inner line area require special permits. Dharchula has in recent years become a little better known as the last motorhead arrued the pilgrimage to Kailash and Mansarovar. This is indeed the gateway to the heaven lake, where from the faithful and the fearless embark on the long and hazardous trek across barren vastness in high Himalayas. Dharchula lies in a twilight zone where the three cultural realms of India, Nepal and Tibet meet. This is where the Shoka tribals, the great trans-Himalayan traders, descend and dwell during the winters, coming down from high altitude pastures to plan their trans-Himalayan expeditions. The journey in past was full of perils and life always hung by a slender thread. But the returns were fabulous. The Shokas braved avalanches and windswept passes to bring back fantastic riches. This interaction, carried on over generations, has left a deep imprint on the Shoka way of life. Dharchula is where even today you can palpably feel the apprehensions and anxiety, ambiguity and ambivalence which are the inevitable lot of those who dwell on the frontiers. To survive and to flourish, the people at Dharchula have had to hone their diplomatic skills and be responsive to the slightest change in the political and economic life on either side of the border. After 1962, when the Chinese aggression the Chinese aggression changed our lives. Because it was closed. How many people नाखों सामान पैसा सब तिब्बत में फंस गया तो ऐसी स्थिति में हमारे लोग बहुत कुछ बिखर गए तो ऐस अब तीन साल से नॉमिनल व्यापार खुला है तो इतने वर्ष तक तो आजीविका के लिए कितने लोगों को भटकना पड़ा पॉलिटिकल अनसर्टेनिटी हैज डिसलोकेटेड मेनी फैमिलीज दिस परहेप्स इज द रीजन दैट द शॉकर्स इन धारचूला क्लिंग हार्ड टू देयर एज ओल्ड ट्रेडिशंस कलरफुल सेरेमनीज costumes and carefully preserved silver jewelry. Any excuse like the kuncha, the annual ritual, reenacting the migration is welcome to revive folklore, music and dance. <laughs> The Shoka women at Dharchula are remarkable for their independence and candor. They exude exceptional self-position. The tribal society is usually quite democratic. It seldom suffers from the blemish of gender bias. These women in past lived without their men for long months and coped ably with diverse challenges of life. Equity and self-reliance are deeply ingrained in the Shoka way of life.
just 30 odd kilometers separate Joljibi from Dharchula. Joljibi the small settlement on the river bank on the Indo-Nepal border. Today, the motor vehicles transport the passengers swiftly and comfortably across in about half an hour. But not very long ago, it took a day's strenuous march to cover the distance. The rivers Gori and Kali have a confluence at Joljibi. The name derives, in fact, from the word which means twin tongues. The rickety and fragile wooden suspension bridge allows the simple hill folk to cross the international border at will. Barter trade has flourished for generations and the lives of the people on either bank of the river have always been charmingly entwined. Joljibi reminds us that culture and kinship often mock man-made boundaries. The Joljibi trade fair has always been at the center of its existence in this town. The annual event has drawn traders and merchants from Tibet, Nepal and the Indian plains for generations. The fair has contributed substantially to the prosperity of the tribal shokas from the valleys of Johar, Chodas and Bias, the high altitude valleys of the Kumaon Himalayas. This is the mart to which the shoka master craftsmen have brought their ware manufactured after months of tedious labour for generations. The Mela is also a time for well-earned revelry, for indulging in fun and food without any restraint and to yield at will to the temptation of the pulsating drum beats. An interesting feature of Joljibi Fair is the enthusiastic participation by the women. The Shoka women, like their counterparts elsewhere in the Himalayas, are the backbone of the rural economy. They come to the fair not only to enjoy themselves, but also to explore the business opportunities. The outing is utilized to exchange ideas and to search for new avenues of enterprise. <laughs> The tradition of bringing ponies across the river continues, but there are hardly any buyers. Gone are the days when horse trading, in the best sense of the word, contributed to the substantial part of excitement here. Political and social changes in recent years, alas, have transformed the complexion of this fair. While there has been a revival of interest in the Joljibi fair with the restoration of trade ties between India and China, many old-timers feel that mere nostalgia is not enough to ensure its survival. Will traditional ties based on barter trade endure the pressures of crude money exchange? Others lament the decay of traditional folk culture. Today, the event is officially sponsored. And this kind of patronage inevitably brings in its wake red tape and artificiality. Shining electrical lights and blaring film music cannot make up for the lost spontaneity. As we left the fairground on the river bank, we could not help pondering what will be the impact of modernity on the life of the shokas, especially the taste of the young, and what will happen to such long cherished institutions like the annual fair. Some Johari Shoka friends we met at the Joljibi fair 
warmly invited us to visit their homes in Munshari. We decided to take this detour to get to know better our own tribal inheritance in the Himalayas. From Joljibi via Thal to Munshari is a distance of a little over 150 kilometers. The narrow dangerous motor road winds up, at times clings to the precipices. Nothing prepares you for the stunning view of the snow-crested peaks of Panchachuli that tower above all else. Munshari is the winter home of the Johari Shokas. This high altitude valley is far removed from the easily accessible tourist routes and the remoteness of the place has helped it preserve its pristine charm. The small but bustling village is familiar only to the adventurous trekkers as a convenient base for mounting expeditions to the Milam Glacier. We found the ambience at Munshari pleasantly different from the tense vibrations of Dharchula. The pace of life is far less hectic and the people appear much more relaxed, at peace with themselves and the world about them. They live in perfect harmony with nature, men and women going about their daily tasks effortlessly, spinning spool after spool of the wool that keeps them aglow with its warmth in the winters. Spinning and weaving, dyeing and drying, all these are almost effortlessly accomplished without disturbing the daily rhythm of life, following musically the changes in the cycle of seasons. All work seems to be a labor of love, not some drudgery undertaken for profitable commerce. There is no confusion here in Munshari about cultural roots or ambivalence about identity. It will be naive to lump all the shokas together, but the difference between the residents of Johar in Munshari and those who dwell in Bias or Chaudas at Dharchula are easily noticeable. Their ancestors may have been intrepid explorers, but the present-day residents of Munshari reflect a marked preference for the settled, contemplative life. There is something magical about Munshari that seems to gently overpower your resistance and seduces you to this mood, inviting you to summon up remembrances of things past to sessions of sweet silent thought. After the bracing interlude at Munshari, we resumed the original itinerary we had chalked out for the drive. The encounter with the Shokas was indeed a moving one. We were made to realize how little we know of our own tribal heritage. The tribal trans Himalayan traders are so different from the tribals found in the plains. But then, the Himalayas are so extraordinary. We can look forward to exceptional enchantment and excitement as we proceed on this drive. From the heights of Munshari to the much lower altitude valley of Champavat via Thal is a long and tiring drive of over 170 kilometers, but the destination makes the exertion worthwhile. Champavat was once the capital of the Chand rulers of Kumaon, renowned for its emerald terraced fields and exquisitely carved temples. These 
These ruins are all that remains of the glory that Champavat once was. But they continue to cast their magical spell. In this sunlit courtyard early in the morning, dividing line between past and present blur, and a beautiful blending between myth, folklore, legend and history takes place. We are reminded that Champavat is the place mentioned in the Skanda Puran, Manas Khand, as the principal gateway to the higher reaches of Himalaya. This is where we definitely leave behind the foothills and encountered the Himalayas in all their glory. This is where legend has it, Guru Nanak encountered Goraknath and had a lively debate with him. This is the place where people for generations have embarked on a hazardous journey to Mansarovar and Kailash. This is where people have come in quest for adventure, spiritual solace or commercial profit. We are transported back a hundred years, maybe more in time, when we step into the paved bazaar, wooden carved houses, and we encounter the same faces, innocent people, whose life has not changed despite the advent of modernity. <laughs> Balladier Dhusyan Damanu lovingly preserves the memories of the heroic past, although the once prosperous capital has lost much of its luster. Singers like the Mami are not just village entertainers, but custodians of a priceless tradition. Their songs not only pay homage to superhuman heroes of past, but also give voice to the aspirations of the people. From Champavat, we drove hard, climbing steeply to reach Pithoragarh, the district headquarters, some 75 kilometers away. For the residents of the evergreen shore valley, there is no place on earth as beautiful as Pithoragad. Pithoragad, only a few decades back, was a sleepy bazaar, catering to the limited needs of soldiers, home on leave, the migrant Nepali workers and travelling traders. Pithoragarh has registered breathtaking growth in recent years. Strategy and commerce have combined to trigger unprecedented development. Construction is booming, ugly structures are mushrooming everywhere, eating up the terraced fields. There remain only a few tranquil spots to sever the awe-inspiring beauty of the mountainscape and of course to lament the loss. The once lush forest is disappearing fast. It is not easy to hear the mountain birds sing here. Their memory remains poignant only in the folk songs. एक अजीब अजीब बातें देखने को मिल रही हैं हमारा ये शहर इतना भर गया है कि पेकाय की जल्दी से चलने को जगह भी नहीं मिलती द ग्रोथ हैज पुट ऑल सिविक एम्यूनिटीज अंडर ग्रेट प्रेशर द कंजेशन ऑन द रोड्स इज मैडनिंग द वाटर क्राइसिस इंक्रीजिंगली एक्यूट दोस बिलोंगिंग टू एन ओल्डर विंटेज थ्रू द रेवेजेस टाइम हैज रॉट एनवायरनमेंट इज अंडर सीवियर स्ट्रेस मैं तो वो हमारे पिथौरागढ़ कहाँ गयो अब तो कुछ सही ना बा अब कहाँ गयो पिथौरागढ़ हमारो ना मात्र हो गयो पिथौरागढ़ तो हम कुछ है ही ना बाजार कुछ भी यहाँ हमारी This is certainly not what the poet meant when he said great things happen when men and mountain meet 
Mountains from times immemorial have inspired man to do great things. But man in his greed often succumbs to a temptation to indulge in something stupid, almost suicidal. Take for instance this mine site at Chandak. Pilgrim, when he came here 150 years ago, encountered nature in all its unspoiled beauty. Not very long ago, this was a verdant oak grove. And what we have today here is gaping holes, wounds on the rock face. There was a time when early in the morning, blue mist rose to reveal the beauty of Pitoragar town. Today there is haze, but it is man-made. The factory next door belches the smoke all day, contributing to pollution and threatening an already fragile ecosystem. How long can this plunder continue? Decades ago, one came here on this hilltop in search of tranquility. Today, the mine cannot remain tranquil. There is great agitation and disturbance. मिनट तो खाते ही आए हैं पांच छह मिल जाते हैं सुबह उठ के और आ रहे हैं पीछे से और आए अपने जीवन के बारे में बताओ क्या फिर क्या बताएं जीवन के बारे में इतनी मुसीबत सारी हमको क्या बताएं हम घर का काम भी ठहरा जंगल की भी ठहरा बच्चे भी ठहरे गाय बच्ची भी ठहरे मुसीबत हमको भारी ठहरी है The much publicized development seems to have bypassed the poor and the downtrodden and marginalized the common man in Pithoragarh as elsewhere in the hills as we leave Pithoragarh, it is difficult to quell the disturbing thoughts. Our drive on the roof of the world is just beginning, but the agitation is great. It cannot be brushed away easily. Have we chosen the appropriate models of development for the hills? Why should there be such a glaring mismatch between what the hill folk require and what is being provided? Why should the bodies of the hill villagers continue to be crippled and the spirit broken by painful drudgery. Why so many sad faces amid such sublime beauty? The irony becomes unbearable when those eking out a miserable existence sing of their good fortune and count the blessings of a birth in the lap of the Himalayas. <laughs> Pahara Janamami